morning and welcome back to Reaper Pro Tips with me, your host, Anne, and Disembodied Hands, Quindy, who dealt with my last minute topic change, plus her minions, Justin and John. Absentee, but present somehow in the ether. How are you all this morning? Ah. I have sound here. You've got sound? All right, if anybody's got sound, then it's Pendrake. <laughs> if, it, if nobody has sound, then it's not just Pendrake. Ah. Yes, yes, we're good, we're good. What I would really like, if I had more dragons, is I would like more dragons that are um, part of their environment. So like a really, like a stony, a stone dragon where the scales are more like rock texture and like a, well, obviously a forest dragon. I would like a new forest dragon because you could do so much more now with the technology. Um, and uh, it would be, I don't know, you know, that kind of cool thing stuff. I like, I like dragons that are themed, like have a mountain dragon and a desert dragon and it could be cool. It could be cool. Just saying, just saying. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about elemental because fire is always hard. I mean, like things, the problem with elemental dragons is that air, fire, and water have, have like a very amorphous form. And so it's hard to do. You can do them, obviously people have, but I, I think I like, I like dragons that are part of their environment a little bit more, like a really swampy dragon and uh, stuff like that. You know, something themed like that. That could be fun. And it would be a little different, right? So... Because there are so many dragons out there, and dragons are great, but it's really cool to, like, come up with a, a concept to make it different. So, speaking of different, yeah, yeah, ghost dragon. Yeah, there used to be one of those, right? Didn't Partha have an old ghost dragon? Sadly, Shadow Raven, I have to share this because this is actually something that I know, at least from the past. I don't know if it's the same now, but... Um, Ed, uh, the, we, Reaper did try Asian style dragons in the past and they never sell. They don't sell. Um, I know I talked to Simon when I was working for them at an Adepticon and they also said that Asian style dragons didn't sell, um, and Western style dragons did. So I don't know, but apparently that's why we don't get more Asian style dragons just because companies have learned that they don't have much of a market. Now that could be different now. That was years ago, several years ago, but it, it was probably a decade apart between me talking to Ed and me talking to, eh, maybe people just like styling, like they just like the more, maybe, maybe, maybe people don't like snaky dragons. I'm sure that there's a kicks. I'm sure there's Patreons now. There's gotta be somebody who's doing 3D modeling on, on, doing more um, Asian dragons, right? But, uh, and that's probably the way you're going to get them because those people don't really have to worry about, you know, keeping stock in, in stock, right? They're, they're selling STL files, so they can do, if they're willing to put the time in if, as a labor of love and they love Asian dragons, they're, they could do a whole bunch of them and they could just, you know, keep them up forever and then you could have Asian dragons whenever you wanted. Um, but yeah, as miniature companies uh, have, have learned yeah. Yeah. Sadly, physical miniatures companies have learned that they just don't sell. And then and then you end up hanging out to a bunch of boxes and having to liquidate or whatever. Or hanging bunch of, hanging out to a bunch of boxes and paying taxes forever. Um, one second. It's, it's uh, wet here. And my allergies are partially mold related, so it's been pretty rough. Hey, Quiddy, take your allergy pill. You couldn't, the problem with that one, Dogfather, is that, um, um, and why can I not remember his name, but he's, the Cloud Dragon in Never Ending Story is very, very um, iconic, like, and if you tried to copy it, they'd hit you probably with a cease and desist. Ah, printed ones are so expensive. Yeah, yeah. Lots of Asian Dragons, STLs. I figured, yeah, Falcor. 
but he's very, you know, he's he's got a very distinctive um, look and feel to him. And so if you get too close, then, you know, you're copying somebody's IP and trying to make money off of it. Which, unless you can get a license. I don't know if he's, an, I don't know if Neverending Story, it can't be public domain because they did the movie. Oh, maybe they do, though. I don't know. Anybody know? I don't think it's old enough to be in public domain, though. So somebody probably still has the rights to it, to the IP. No idea. Anyway, let's, uh, let's grab a knife, and while we talk about all this intellectual property and dragon stuff, um, we can remove some old lines from our beautiful dragon pokey tool. And then uh, while we're doing this, what I want you guys to do is to toss out suggestions for colors. I don't care if you're at work. Watch till your boss is across the office and... Uh, and figure out what color you would like me to do, and we will write down your suggestions, and then I will put up, I will choose four or five of those and put those up for a vote today. I figured with the 3D printing market being what it is, there had to be a market for, there had to be oriental style dragons out there. All right, got little little bits of, uh, not a lot of flaws on this. Just little bits of material here and there to take off. And of course, since it's Bones USA, it's very easy to take off little bits of flash and mold lines. So dark purple, you mean, Shadow Raven? Hold on, let me grab a pen. As the questions come in, dark purple, icy blue, NMM anything, bronze. Shadow dragon colors, huh? Yeah, I mean, blue purple and deep purple are both uh, are what you do for shadow dragons, probably. Well, you don't want to do shading into glossy black. It doesn't look very good. <clears throat> so if they describe the dragon as, you know, that shading into glossy black... That's fine, but um, you don't want to do glossy anything in your shadows. Uh, essentially, it makes your details not stand out because then the light is catching the glossy and the cracks. So that means that your shadows can't actually define, help define the shapes of the model. So I just ignore Pendrake. Like Pendrake just makes funny, like he, he makes like funny suggestions, but not suggestions that I would ever have fun painting. <laughs> Like rainbow, no, please. <laughs> nope, nope. Not doing a rainbow dragon. Nope, nope. It just sounds not fun to paint. Sorry, guys. Oh, I see. So the scale should be shiny, but the black shouldn't be shiny. So you're asking for an NMM blue purple dragon, if you're asking that. I don't know if you realize that, but that's what you're essentially asking for. Because if you ask for shiny scales, then you're gonna then you then you're doing NMM technique on a color. I just don't think they ever like I've yet to see one that I really thought looked good, Kernico. Yeah. Yeah, Tyranids are really where the color shift paints like really work out, right? So people want, people are, are talking like, maybe I won't even have to put up a poll at this point. Because it sounds like people are all gravitating to one in one direction. But I'll wait. Any other suggestions of colors? Oh, we've got Reapercon 2022 on the back of our little dragon. Here, I'll get in focus here. Get in focus, Anne. You're so out of focus. Oh, 
Oh, I don't have a change. I don't have a mind. Uh, I am not of a single mind yet. I am still open. I don't actually gravitate toward anything. I just watch and see what the crowd gravitates toward because remember, I'm going to be putting up this on a poll. At this point, I do not know what Perlene Black is. So I'm just taking off a little bit more mold lines. All the mold lines go around the edges of the horns. And some of the horns have very little mold line on them. And some of them have a bit more. Now this is one model that I might prime. Um, I might choose, you might choose to prime it because uh, you're going to be handling it, right? But I think instead of priming it, um, I'm going to put the paint on it. And then I will essentially put um, extra layers of sealer. But yeah, if you want your dragon pokey tool to be really um, protected, then I would probably put a layer of gloss, a heavy spray gloss sealer, and then something dull, duller over the top. Um, or put several layers of a, of a duller sealer. Although be aware that as you build up layers of a, uh, a satin or matte sealer, it will get shinier and shinier. And this is actually a just a property of the uh, the matting agent, which is creating a bumpy surface, getting filled in with multiple layers and essentially becoming a satin. Because it's the little bumps in the surface that makes it, make it matte. But if you put more than one layer on, those bumps all start to fill up each other, kind of like sand, where you're adding more and more like fine sand and the sand just starts to even out. Nope, we were just talking about it. Um, so far, so far, everybody. Uh, we have. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna write down my colors here. So far, we have uh, pretty much a shadow dragon, i.e., blue, dark blue, purple. Uh, we have icy blue. We have NMM bronze. We have black green. And if I don't hear anything else. Then I'm probably going to go with those choices, but since people are still showing up, if you have a suggestion for how you would like me to paint the dragon head, then you should let me know while I am uh, cleaning mold lines and stuff. Yeah, I'm bored with red. I've been doing a lot of red. Red gold is kind of the classic dragon color. Although it would help me see the pokey tool for when I am like lo have lost it and I need to go searching for it. You know, the inevitable moment. And I'm already working with rich indigo for, uh, for fishy, so I really don't want to do more rich indigo right now. Otherwise, you know... Actually, Phantom Glow and Rich Indigo is really close to our color scheme for Fishy because we're using Surf Aqua and Rich Indigo. Okay, I think I need, let me see here. His lip looks like it's got a little bit of roughness around the outside edge, so I'm going to, actually I'm going to move this back a little bit. I feel like I'm, there we go, better in focus. No, Grey Wolf, we are, um, we are taking suggestions right now, although I pretty much have nixed red and I've nixed rich indigo because I, uh, I'm already doing something with rich indigo and I'm bored with red. I feel like I've been painting a lot of red. So I am holding, we'll hold for another minute or so, and then we're going to put up a poll. So right now we have a shadow dragon, i.e. dark purple, blue, black. Um, we have icy blue, we have NMM bronze, we have black green. Those are our choices so far. If you have a choice, oh, we have Nyxed, we have said no way to rainbow, rich indigo, and red.
All right. All right, I am going to go. Yeah, I'm painting a lot. Again, I've got a lot of teal right now and a lot of aqua, like on the genies. So. I think I'm going to go with the. Uh, with these uh, suggestions, Quindy, are you ready? So let's put up, uh, number one is gonna be Shadow Dragon, parentheses, uh, dark blue or purple with black. I, I take the, I'll just essentially work with all those colors and see what I get. Um, the second one is Icy Blue, which would probably go up to white. The next one would be non-metallic metal bronze. And then the last one I'm gonna say is gonna be a black green slash emerald. Which is a fair amount of variety. And I could do any of those colors. I could be happy with any of those colors. This is nice because with this pokey tool, you get an opportunity to just work on a very small dragon. Um, and just kind of like, you've got enough scales to like play with. You've got teeth to play with and eyes. The eyes are big enough that you can make them a nice contrasting. Uh... Oh, I'm done taking your suggestions. Sorry, you've you've been too. You've taken too long, everyone. You've taken too long. Those four suggestions are all I want. So, Shadow Dragon, Dark Blue Purple with some black, Icy Blue, NMM Bronze, or Black Green slash Emerald. And we'll see if, if Quindy, uh, let me know if you need me to repeat anything, Quindy. This would be those four. Those four. I like I like all of those suggestions, so... So then the crowd gets to vote. Hmm, but I'll give Quindy time and she may have stepped. Oh, you got it? You on it? Okay. Quindy's on it. Quindy is on it, folks. And I won't take out any colors. In fact, I'll just put away some colors. I had a bunch of colors hanging out down here that I need to put away. So I'll wait. While Quindy gets that up. Oh, um, just put Shadow Dragon Blue Purple if you must. Or Shadow Dragon Dark Blue Purple. Or Dark Blue Purple. Because I know that... Yeah. I know that I'm sure that it's fighting you with too many, too many letters. Darn you vote thing, you should be able, you should allow us to do a paragraph. Paragraphs that make people read and say too long didn't read. And, uh, there we go. But hey, I'm, I'm uh, cleaning up my, uh, my area, so I'm feeling pretty good. Oh, oh, I didn't want to put that away. Curses, I needed that. Okay, it's up. All right, people, I'll vote on what we are going to paint the Dragon Pokey Tool, and I'm going to vote too. Although, you know what? Maybe I won't vote on this one because I like all these suggestions. Either black green or blue purple, dark blue purple are all, are both running neck and neck here. Yep. So yes, if you've just come in, we're deciding what color to paint our dragon pokey tool. There is a poll at the top of your chat. Please weigh in. We have a tie, we need it broken. I guess if we uh, if we get to the end and it's a total tie, I'm gonna just flip a coin or uh, I'll roll a dice. I'll have to find a dice. I may have a dice somewhere around here. Usually I keep my emergency die. 
Up, oh, up. Oh, we have, we no longer have a tie. All right, team team Emerald. It's time to time to get people talked around to your uh, creative artist pro. Yeah, I could just make a decision, but I like both. K pack so. I have a D20 dice roller on my own Twitch channel, but we I don't know if we have one here on Reaper. I don't know. This is okay to turn, voter turnout. We have by 28 people. We only had 30 people in stream yesterday. I think this voter turnout is pretty good. Right now we have Shadow Dragon. Dark Blue Purple is winning with... Uh, Oh, ask the eight ball. Yes, yes. Thank you, Quiddy. Thank you. Oh, 50% for voter turnout. Okay. Well, that's that's decent still. That's decent. Some people are going to have us muted, remember. Some people are going to be working and uh, can't get away, and some people are going to have us muted because they're working, so... I think I think 50, a little more than fifty percent or fifty percent itself is is pretty good, pretty good. But yeah, you still have a little bit of time to vote, everybody, to vote on our dragon, and what color it's going to be. And meanwhile, I will start figuring out what colors. Assuming, assuming that oh, it looks it looks like blue purple is yeah shadow is pulling away for sure. Well, I guess that I better figure out what color I want to use then. I'm just going to wander around in my paint collection here. Hmm. We are getting there. It's almost done. And it looks like we're very firmly in the camp of uh, Shadow Blue Purple. I'm going to go there, I think. Yes. And... I'm just playing around with highlight colors here. Yeah, that's good. Yes, I don't think puppies need Twitch accounts. For sure, for sure, Kiki does not need one. She would do a bunch of streams. She would be like some teenage influencer of dogs. Or she would just do a bunch of streams of my owner leaves me in a crate and it's BS and let's chew on stuff. Yeah. My favorite colors are purple and gold. You can totally do pur purple and gold and have it look good. All right, Pokey Tool. Time to get on it. Well then, since we are since we are planning to have it shade down to black, we are going to start with black. We're actually going to essentially prime black without priming black. I'm just going to paint the model black. And since I have it on my crate right, or on my plate right now, what I'm using is Besmara, which is a neutral black that's very similar to pure black. I had dragon black too. I suppose I could have used dragon black. It would have actually been appropriate. Oh, well. Dragon black is a slightly colder black. They both are going to look black on the model. Mine were maroon and gold. I haven't painted anything maroon. Maybe we should fix that. But we're not painting this dragon room a room, so. Uh, 
Um, Julie usually tells me, dog father, that she doesn't have any color in mind when she sculpts a dragon. She's only thinking form, she's not thinking in color. I have tried numerous times to ask her that sort of question. I'm gonna put one drop of water in, I've got about six drops of paint. I want this uh, coat to be pretty thick, but just a little bit of water always helps the paint flow a little better. Afternoon crows. Alrighty, well let's get a big brush just to cover the territory quickly. I think I'm gonna use, I have a gigantic brush, although that seems like overkill, but I guess we could do that. We probably need to swap down to a smaller brush though. Um, I'll just use my Reaper one. I almost used gigantic brush, but then I was like, eh. I think the Reaper Zero is gonna be good enough. This is going to make this model uh, hard to see for a little while on the camera. But yeah, since I want, um, it's much easier. Some of you might think uh, paint it, paint it blue purple and then put a black wash on it. And, and that could work, but if you want a brighter blue purple, then you're handicapping yourself because the black is going to make the underlying color dingy. So that's why I would just base coat with black or use a black primer. I would definitely do a Zenith though. Um, and we probably will underpaint a little bit on these scales, both because it's fun to uh, create textures that way and uh, because it'll make our blue-purple a little brighter. You do want, if you are not using primer, you do want a pretty thick coat of paint on your uh, dragon, though. Now this, uh, if you, any of you have painted the metal pokey tools and have rub off, this should resist rub off a little bit better, depending on how, how hard you're having to press on it, because the plastic is softer. Part of why metal rubs off is just that it's so very hard. Bob and Julie. Julie totally understands the artist thing. The artist vibe, right? If you can pick to do what you want to do, you will do better work. Although to be fair, um, and I am like this often on this stream, because I've just painted so many things over the course of my life, I am happy uh, to follow the will of the crowd on some things. Like there are definitely times where I'm just like, eh, you guys choose. And I'm happy to do any of that. And sometimes the crowd will choose uh, a color scheme that I wouldn't normally have chosen, and it will actually turn out really well. So you also get those happy surprises like that. But I very much like a, I like to start in a box. Um, I enjoy starting with guidelines and rules and then iterating to figure out what I can do within those rules. Like interesting things. This is why I like Golden Demon as a painting competition and why some people are really bothered by it. Um, is I look at it as a challenge to paint inside of their box, whereas other people look at it as limiting to paint inside of their box. So, hey, has anybody been keeping track of the Journeyman um, painting competition? Journeyman miniatures? I know that their due date was uh, in this month, was in November. Yeah, and so oftentimes the crowd says something and it says, nope. Um, the black base is a pretty good one. It's any base that has a, that's a little bit harder, but harder bases can also be harder to layer with. Um, so like our skin tones like are very easy to layer with, but they're, it's, a, it's a slightly softer base. So if you go for a darker color, you're usually going to get a little more durability. But... I mean, that said, you're still pressing against the surface, right? So it's still going to be prone to rub off. 
Um, enamel is the thing that would not rub off, but of course we don't use that, so. It's all about the brain chemistry, Big Apple. It's all about it. And this morning I was uh, I was questioning my goals with NaNoWriMo. Like, because typing, you know, a lot of words a day on top of everything else you're trying to get done is actually pretty stressful, or it can be. So I'm like, what is my real goal with NaNo? My real goal with NaNo has probably always been to establish a daily writing habit, right? And so if you're doing something like Reaper Challenge League... Um, and you're feeling like pressured because it's um, hard to finish, right? Kind of stop and ask yourself, why am I actually doing this? Because sometimes it's not just, I want to finish a bunch of models in a short period of time. You may have gone into it thinking that was what you wanted. But if you stop and think about it, you may find that really what you wanted was just to paint more. In which case, maybe you step back and use that competition as inspiration to just, you know, establish a daily painting habit or a weekend painting habit or whatever kind of painting habit you're trying to establish. So for me, I'm still going to try to finish Nano. Like, I, but my goal for Nano wasn't necessarily words. It was more to finish a thing, like finish project. So I don't know. I... I'm switching the perspective, switching the goal in my head actually made a big difference, I guess, is what I have come down to. Like, because when I was thinking of, oh, no, I have to write this many words a day, it was it was stressful. But when I was thinking of, I want to establish a daily writing habit, it's a lot less stressful. So sometimes you need to rephrase things for your brain because your brain will just be freaking out over something that you're like, why am I freaking out? And you have to take a look at it. Brains are weird. Brains are weird. I've been struggling to finish my PDF for my $2 tier for the Patreon because PDFs take a lot of time. Um, the writing of them, the outlining of them, the writing of them, the editing of them, and then I have to sit down and paint examples, which takes time. Um, Thank you for the the uh, the plug, Quindy. So I'm doing one on metallic black armor or NMM black armor. Black armor is what I'm doing, and it's actually turning into a a heftier PDF than I normally would put out for the two dollar tier. Uh, but that means it's taking time, and uh, I'm feeling a little pressured because I want to get it done so I can move on to my next piece of content. Alrighty, let us uh, start kind of figuring out where our colors are going to be. Now we need to keep a fair amount of black on this for it to uh, really look shadowy. So I'm going to paint a little bit of white onto the raised surfaces and I'm going to think about texture on these. Uh, because it's such a small dragon, I can totally texture out uh, surfaces. Whereas on a big dragon, maybe I wouldn't want to even start that because uh, texture would mean a lot of work on every scale. Although one way you could do it if you did want to add some texture onto scales like little nicks and stuff or color variation um, is you could just do that on the biggest scales and then make the small scales simpler. Oh no. Oh no, Quindy. Oh, okay, Kroniko. Yeah, I was just trying to keep on track because I have friends who are entering it and I wanted to see if they, if they posted up all the things. I wanted to see what the entries looked like. So with horns, it's nice to put in some kind of striated, and you can do it either way. You can do it um, long ways like that, or you could do it um, the opposite way, kind of like a horse's hoof, where you start kind of on the outer edge and you do it more horizontal. You could do it either way. So I normally do this, but I kind of like the look of this, even though sometimes you have to look at the sculpt too, because sometimes the sculpt is definitely a different way. But I think I like it um, that way. It's different. So I think I'm going to do that. 
So just by underpainting this in white, um, it'll enable my other colors to go over the top and look brighter. Hello, hello, Dorian. I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. It's when it's uh, it's Wednesday, halfway to the weekend. Um, I finally have like just kind of a weekend to be kind of leisurely, where I don't have things to watch or commit to. So there, and uh, yeah, it's all right. Oh, I guess I do have one thing. I have a, the puppy has her, uh, the new puppy has her first obedience class on Sunday. We'll see how obedient she is. I'm not expecting much. <laughs> so here I went more um, lines like this way on the little scales. And then I started angling it more here. So that then when I got to this big broad area, I could go all the way like that. So just patterns for underpainting. And then we've got some uh, And you can be a little bit rough with this texture. It doesn't need to be perfect. Because you're going to be painting over it anyway and re-highlighting. So really it's just kind of, it allows you to take a look at the amount of black and white on your surface. When you're trying to keep a model dark, this can be helpful because often we highlight too much. Um, if we want to keep a model very dark, we have to keep a lot of it very dark and if you start filling in everything it's going to end up looking like a white dragon more than a black dragon so doing this sort of thing and then just kind of stopping and looking at it and maybe uh bringing in a little more black can help you if you're trying to do um this is we're going to do kind of a shadow dragon right so although i want some texture it should be mostly in my highlights and I want to keep a fair amount of black in the shadows. The shadow dragon. All right, so I'll probably do a bit of a proof of concept on this, uh, maybe on the side of the face, maybe on the horn. I think probably on one side, just a little bit to make sure that, uh, the effect I'm getting is what I want. When you're kind of playing around with a color combo you haven't done before, then uh, it's good to finish out just a couple of scales and then judge whether it's really the effect you're going for because it might sound good in your head and then when you get it on the model we've all we've all been through this but when you get it on the model you're like meh not so much although I do think I would like I wonder if I have a cork I do not have a round cork I know I have one around here somewhere somewhere I have a miniature holder with a cork but I think I'm just gonna grab a chunk of cork because I keep those around I'm just gonna put po poke the tool into it there much better yay Quindy Oof, it's cold here it's and it's gonna stay cold for a while the rain brought our uh, our winter temps with it so it uh, should get down to actually 39. It's supposed to get down to 39 at night. Um, I think tonight or tomorrow. Which is very cold for us. We don't see uh, freeze typically because, you know, it, which is good because we have fruit trees. Definitely bring that eye in.
Now, one thing we also thought about doing with shiny scales or making this more like a non-metallic metal um, blue-purple. And we can do that, in which case I'm probably just going to highlight, as you see, these scales are actually pretty good for it because like a sword, they have two angles. So there's the top and the bottom. That actually makes it a little easier to do an NMM treatment on them. So I'm going to do light up top. I'll still be bringing in more black, but and I'll be doing a lot more than this, but I just want to get some of this blocked in so that we can put the colors down. And then we've got our lower eyelid for our dragon. Alrighty. So we're kind of just blocking in different scales and bits. And I'm keeping in mind kind of metallics. I think I want to suggest small little scales micro scales up there on the nose. And you could totally paint texture where there isn't any if you want to. If you do want to uh, create scale patterns, this is a good time to underpaint them. Or you can leave it smooth depending on what you'd like to do. We've got our dragon's lips. Yeah, sounds like you've had wonky weather lately, Kuro. Get the area around the nostril and then let's start working on it. Start bringing in our purple. We have to ask ourselves if we're going to do a little bit of uh, crinkles down the snout here, which I think we will. There. Oh. A little bit too far, I got a tooth. We've got sun during the day, but it's definitely cold. All right, dragon. Need to figure out where my uh teeth are here. I'm going to put that, connect that because that's that ridge over the top of the teeth. There. All right. Dragon. All right, let's paint. I'm going to use Imperial Purple, Tropical Blue, and Ice Double Blue for a little bit high highlights. So Imperial Purple over Black is going to be pretty dark. Um, you wouldn't want to use something like nightshade purple. You could possibly use Styx purple, but Styx is not very bright, so I decided I wanted it a little more vibrant, so I'm going with Imperial. Um, Styx would be a more muted purple. It has a little bit of a grayed out feel to it. Nightshade is just too dark. It won't show up at all over the black. So we'll try this and see if I like it, and uh, if, it, if I don't like it, then we'll change it. Yep, Shadow Dragon 1.
So that, and then I'm actually going to make a mixture of these to see how they look. So a uh, drop of the Imperial Purple and throw some Tropical Blue in it. I'll pull my palette down. Boop. See what color this makes. So kind of a pretty indigo color, that's nice. start on that and I'll just do a little bit of blue I really like this ice double blue it's a nice clean blue which doesn't have black in it or if it does it has a very tiny amount um, and it's got a very warm aqua shift to it I like that Is it all pocket day, Quindy? See, I always liked the cool colors. This when I was a kid, I liked um, colors that were in the cool register, blues and purples. I can't remember if Wednesday is all pocket day, but I, something in my brain thinks that it is. All right, so you see my colors. So now we're going to go and push this back up, and I can start applying them. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'll probably have to do a little bit more than to make up some time on a different day. All right, so Imperial Purple first. And here I'll paint it over the entire area, and you see, uh, you will see that it uh, looks lighter over the white and darker otherwise. So let's just do that. Let's just paint the purple all over the place. And I thinned this about four to one, knowing that Imperial is a little bit translucent. It was uh, one of the first purples we did for MSP in Core. So it doesn't quite have, so there are later purples that have better coverage. But sometimes translucency works with you, and when you are working over Zenith, highlighting is one of those times. So I think we're out from under the rain. We had rain last night too. Flash flood, flash flood warnings all over our area. So you can see that my underpainting showed through. So we're going to wait for it to dry. I'm going to put a little bit more purple up here. Make the horns themselves pretty short. Yeah, I mean, blue and purple make indigo, although this is a um, more muted indigo than rich indigo because I'm using a blue with a yellow in it. Um, and of course, purple has, um, you're going the opposite direction with the purple, yellow and purple. So trying to bring up this purple straight over black would take you a long time. I mean, you can see how dull it is over the black, right? So going over the white has saved us a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there is a thing in fall where it's just nice to be inside and warm with candles and good food and your favorite hobby or a good book and uh, just kind of be there 
listening to tunes or a podcast and watching the bad weather outside and knowing that you are warm and uh, comfortable for sure. All right, so I'm waiting for that to dry. And I might want to, we'll see now. We'll see how, how much our indigo is going to push this. So uh, if I'm doing NMM, then I have specific things I need to do. So why don't I actually underpaint some of that? So I mentioned that these big long ones are like sword blades, right? They're, they've got a facet to them. And so if I'm doing this in metallic, if I'm trying to do this dragon in NMM, I'm going to edge highlight just like I would edge highlight a sword. Even though I'm painting in purple and blue instead of uh, white, gray, and black. And this is one area where you would keep the back black, by the way. So you would define an edge, even though there isn't one very much down there. Um, it's the hurricane. Oh, nice. Yeah, I thought about crocheting Kiki a, um, a bed, but since she is so large, it would be a very large bed. And uh, I wanted to get her past the point where she would chew it. Although usually with beds, she's pretty good. But but the only uh, crocheted thing she's had are her, are her, like, is her wool ball, so... I fear, and that is a chewable item, so I fear I've set a bad precedent. So again, edge. spent a lot of time on Overwatch last night. We, uh, one of David's guild friends from his WoW guild was on Overwatch, and uh, he had other friends who were playing Overwatch, and so he invited them into our group. We actually had a five stack. We actually had a five-man group that was all, you know, not just random. <laughs> it was just, I think, the first time I have ever had that. I never had enough friends playing in the old days to have a complete six stack. But last night we had a complete five stack and it was actually super fun. So I kind of said I missed out on that before. Uh oh, my computer wants to say chime. Oh, funny. Yeah, right. Shelters and polling places, and uh, inconveniently, there's an election going on, right? Or there was yesterday. It is. Speaking of dragons, for those of you who are World of Warcraft fans, the new uh, playable draconic race comes out. In less than a week. <laughs> yes.
So again, just edging each of these as if it's metal. That's how we're going to start out. And just that white alone gives it an almost crystal look. Although we have to do a lot more to get it really to look like that. Let's see. I forgot to paint uh, purple on this side of these. There. So this is a good example of how you could get something that looks really cool just by doing like a zenith and a heavy wash of color and then like some edge highlighting. Um, people who do that for their gaming models or, or um, you know, or their role playing models, um, this is definitely a tactic that works, even though it may seem very simple. But if you put a single strong highlight over, you know, something that already has some variation in light and dark, then you'll get something that looks pretty good tabletop, all things considered. to kind of throw some indigo on here. So I'm going to figure out where the light's probably falling the strongest, which is going to be in here. And then a little bit with our light blue. And a little bit more purple lost it. So this is my proof of concept. I'm just pretty much mucking around, figuring out how I want this piece to look in the end. And just uh, to do that, just playing with these horns to see what kind of effects I can get with these colors. And remember that surface control is a thing here. And by surface control, that's what I call the percentage of each color that you use on a given surface. So if I want each of these to stay purple, I need to make sure I limit my blue. My blue had gotten to be over a half of the surface there and everything was starting to look blue. Then I bring in more purple over here and now it starts to look purple. So you definitely need to keep an eye on that. Yeah, we're just big over here and we've got all these different like, you know, ecosystems and you know, we've got our, our desert and our rainforest and our mountains and our plains and our forests and our, you know, we've got all sorts of crap over here. And I think that just makes us have all sorts of weather. I'm kind of happy I don't live in a, in a um, tornado zone anymore. Like, earthquakes are scary, but tornadoes, I saw... You know, I see I see destructive tornadoes, or I saw destructive tornadoes a lot more frequently when I was down there than I've seen earthquakes here. Of course, I've just been lucky, and I haven't lived through a really scary earthquake out here. So, although apparently there was a, a 5.5 or something that I should have felt that I totally managed to ignore or not feel um, that hit last month. It's funny because I swear my dad tracks this stuff more than I do. I get this text from David and dad and they're like, did you feel the earthquake? And I'm like, no, I was out wrestling a puppy. <laughs> so essentially for this uh, ice devil blue mixed with the tropical blue, I'm keeping it very, very small. You can see it.
I need to make sure I don't lose my edge, my edging. Now over here on the muzzle where I put these scales, I'm actually going to go over my purple on the top part with blue. Because the um, this area, there's an angle actually that runs, this is the top of the muzzle and then there's an angle and there's the bottom. So I'm definitely going to actually treat this muzzle area as if it's a blade but by putting more light blue highlights right along that edge let me get my ice level blue here yeah I just don't I think unless it's a really dramatic one I'm I'm just not noticing it Turgeon I'm always uh, I think with the puppy it was a big one, but we were outside. I sometimes think it's much easier to notice earthquakes when you're inside because you're going to notice little things shake, right? Whereas if you're out walking along the street like we were and it wasn't enough to like really shake things, you're not going to notice little things trembling or kind of wobbling or moving, right? You're not, that's just, you know, that could be just the wind. So I think that just because I was out with the pup, I just didn't see it, didn't notice it at all. I have been in an earthquake that I did notice that was scary out here in uh, the Bay Area a long time ago, though. But that one, I was inside, and that one was so scary that the entire building was shaking. It was a very surreal experience. It reminds you that that molecules are actually like kind of fluid. <laughs> Even solid things are made up of little tiny bits of energy. Um, because I was in uh, I was in an apartment and I heard a kind of a um, a sound like a, there was like a, an iron st stairway uh, on leading up to our apartment. Just this was you know they had outdoor entries. And it sounded like somebody was just like running really hard up and down the stairway. And then I looked up at the, uh, just to look outside. And I remember seeing the curtain rod and the curtain rod actually rippled in front of my eyes. Like, and if that isn't creepy, if that doesn't like give you kind of a moment, like then you're just like, oh, it's an earthquake. But then it was over like it it just before i could even really react other than to go oh my god oh my gosh it was like i was it was so over so quick i didn't have, even have time to be scared kerniko but yeah like your reality like just kind of bumps right <laughs> you're like oh yeah molecular structure it's a thing <laughs> my curtain rod was fluid <laughs> Uh, almost. Not quite. It didn't pour or anything, but yeah. You know, it's just immalleable, I should say. Malleable is a better word. It was creepy, though. So, And I still moved here, even with that experience. So uh, yeah, I'm either crazy or I've decided that I'm willing to deal with earthquakes more than I'm willing to deal with tornadoes. Tornadoes are the natural disaster that I kind of grew up with. We have them in Wisconsin, and then, we, of course, we had them very much in North Texas. And also severe thunderstorms. And not hurricanes. Yeah, in San Jose, the 5.1. 
Yeah, and I didn't even notice it. So I think it was just that I was outside. There was nothing for, for reference for me to notice. So we've got our, our scales are coming along pretty cool. We're probably going to need to darken, uh, darken stuff down a little bit more. Still, because we want it to be a very shadowy dragon. I'm working hard on highlights right now, but that's fine. I can always knock things down. But yeah, my, uh... David's much more cognizant of the earthquake risks than I am, probably because his dad grew up here, and so he, um, you know, and he's lived here for a while, and so he's familiar, like it's in his mind. But I guess I'm a newer, uh, even though I was born here, I'm, I'm nonetheless a more, a newer, more recent Californian, so... He just bought us a bunch of big jugs for earth, for water storage. Yeah, puppies away. A major one, like if we lived in an urban area, I would be a lot more nervous about a major earthquake. But we live in a one-story house in an area where there's nothing really big and tall except trees that are going to fall and power lines, you know, but it's, it's stuff, bad stuff could certainly happen. But, um, it's not as scary as if I was like driving on the freeway every day or going down to where there were really tall buildings. Then I would, then I would be freaky. Then I, I don't think I would enjoy that that much. There was a, a time when I first came to visit David a long time ago. Um, when I drove, just drove out pretty much to do stuff in the Bay Area and have lunch with him and dinner. And uh, I was at a really tall, one of the really tall hotels downtown in the Bay in San Francisco. And uh, all while I was there, I was just thinking, and if an earthquake hits in five minutes, you know, I'm done. Because um, I was like on the 30th floor or something. <laughs> yes, somebody is awake, but we're ignoring her. Because it's way early. Way early for Barkies. Yeah. Oh, Kerniko, sad. Yeah, I didn't. I haven't been leaving her with her critical role just because uh, she's been settling in pretty well without it. So that means though that when she wakes up, she doesn't have any. Uh, sound distractions. All right, I'm going to thin everything a little bit more here. Both because it's later in the stream and I need to and because I'm starting to work more with blends and trying to get precise areas done. Yep, 10 minutes. She can wait for 10. We'll have a Luca a fair amount of uh I'm, I'm liking the colors that i chose so i'm going to keep them i think we will need to uh, shade a bit more down and make sure we keep enough the thing is that when you're doing black the minute you throw nmm into it you're struggling so when you're doing a dark color and you're trying to nmm because you have to depict light in order to tell the viewer that it's metallic or shiny. So you're stuck because you have, there is definitely a minimum of light you probably want to depict, but that puts a lot of light, you know, we can keep a lot of the, under, the undersides dark, but it puts a lot of light on the model. So we'll, we'll have to be very selective and I'll have to bring in more black. Also having this, uh, the shadows actually be black, as you can see right now, is giving us a very cartoon or comic book look. So this is how you paint comic book style. Is those black shadows give you that comic book style. And then from there, it's how, it's, it's how you do your shadows, like the, or how you do texture and highlights. 
I'm going to put black in here. Oh, she's got her squeaky toy. She really likes small toys lately, so I bought her a little sea turtle, and it's squeaky. Yep, have a good lunch, Shadow Dragon. And I hope you are enjoying the, or Shadow Raven. I hope you're enjoying that we are doing a Shadow Dragon. Bring in more dark here. Bork, bork. Eh, eh, Kiki. You hear her, like, trying to knock the, uh, she's got a, a cover on top of her crate, but it's malleable. It just sits there. So when she's really feeling petulant, she'll just start raking it with her claws until she dumps the stuff on top of her crate on the floor. Because Kiki. Because puppy. So I went in and did more black shadows. You can really see that. Yeah, we'll probably have to take some purple and some black and, and darken down some areas even more in order to get this to look dark enough. Or I just decide that I like the way it looks and I'm not going to change it. That's also an option. That is definitely an option. Did you hear the howl? It's terribly cute. Tiny little howls. So sad. So sad. Now I'm going to act up again. Oh, her water's probably there. One second. One second. I have to, have to rescue the water because I doubt that David did. in the morning her water bucket is super full because I I fill it three quarters full and so she bangs her paws into the edges of it because it's on the outside of her crate she is not mature enough to have one inside of her crate um, so she'll splash it all over the floor and we have wood floors so we really don't want that so I can ignore the uh, the ceiling pounding but I cannot ignore the uh, the water bucket sound <laughs> Yep, silly pupper. Well, and she wants her walk. on get some black yeah we're almost set yeah I would never do an NM treat NMM treatment like this on a really big dragon because it would take forever you could do it on a smaller dragon without completely losing your sanity You'd do it a little different though on a on a big dragon. Like you'd do it more like I did the iridescence on the the dragon during the Kickstarter, where you're painting it more as a group of scales instead of looking at individual parts as much. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, if you've got no sanity points left, you've got very little to lose, Carnico. So, like, if you did this on a big dragon, you would definitely be highlighting, like, this edge, like, all light. Despite the underlying texture. I mean, if you did it, you'd have a competition piece for sure, right? It's like, it's the sort of madness you only ever do um, either entirely for yourself, for the joy of it, or to enter in a competition. I mean, and if you like repetitive, like if you kind of find repetitive work relaxing, this sort of thing is very relaxing. I mean, I did all this leather work on that foot tall statue of soldier 76 for overwatch and it was also just tons of little tiny freehand and all this sort of thing yeah crowley have fun oh that's the painted one yeah the painted one is pricey yes hashtag free the kiki don't worry it'll happen I have to have my uh, have my piece of chocolate that I desperately need before taking Kiki out to keep me in a happy mood as I as we work on our uh, our walking on a quote unquote loose lead, which is uh, a work in progress, definitely. So now our dragon definitely looks um, blue and purple, but definitely also uh, well fairly dark. But the highlights are shiny. That's the thing is if it's going to be shiny scales, you're going to have a lot of light, even on a dark dragon. It's going to be reflective. So you're telling me I should do a giveaway of my big extra Maldekar that I have because it's, like, not possible to get right now? Because I have an extra Maldekar, you realize. I just had to figure out how to actually mail it to someone. I assume I'd have to... Wrap it in postal paper. <laughs> now, now, we don't play favorites on the stream, Crows. But yeah, I don't have a box that fits the Maldricar, except for its own box. I'd have to try to cobble something together. She's 21 inches tall now, miss. Oh, eight inches tall. You're tall. <laughs> yes, your, your puppy is eight inches tall. <laughs> hey there, Tiffany. We are uh, doing a shiny, shiny, shiny dragon. Um, kind of figuring out how I want to do it. It was supposed to be a shadow dragon, but then the, um, they wanted uh, metallic, like a shiny scales shadow dragon. So I'm trying to do essentially NMM on a dragon's. Dragon head, which you know, like you do. So, Dragon Pokey Tool. So, this is like our Reaper Pokey Tools that are here to clear bottles. Um, except Julie sculpted this little Dragon Head one, so it's cute, and I thought I would paint it. <laughs> so do we like is mal out of out of print for a long time like do we just run out of it and then it takes forever to get back in i don't know how long it's been out of print if it's been out of print like as far as just us not having any reaper not having any i mean it is the best five-headed dragon in my opinion. Or Hydra. Best best either of those. Oh, out of stock forever, huh? Yeah, sounds like it might be time to do a giveaway for mine. Maybe I'll do it here on this stream. Ah, 
I'll have to think about that. Getting it out of the closet would be nice. And I'd like to see it go to somebody who really wants to paint one. Because I already I have a resin one, so. Oh wow. Oh. Well then, yeah, that sounds like it might be uh, time to have a super awesome dragon giveaway. After all, I never give anything away. I kind of wish I was still uh, working uh, at Reaper proper and uh, I could actually do a dragon giveaway because I could just go mail them all afterwards. We could, we could give away a bunch of dragons. Our shiny, shiny dragon is looking kind of nice. Oh, wow. Crazy, Kriniko. So you're telling me I could get some serious money for this model. Now i got to think about whether I want to give it away. <laughs> you know I'm broke, guys, right? <laughs> like, most of the time, I consider uh, auctioning or selling a model too much effort for the money you get. But I wonder. Now I'm going to have to check eBay and see what they're going for. There we go, a nice solid eye. Yeah, I mean, that's just a 350, well, and that's in euros. Like, that's what, 450 in American? I don't remember what the exchange rate is these days. It wobbles so much. Oh, all right. Cool. Thanks, Quindy. Thanks for the heads up. I'll have to debate what I'm going to do with my Melder car. But there we go. So that's how far we got on our shadow, our, our shiny shadow dragon. He's looking pretty shiny. He's looking pretty shiny. Yeah, the puppy is barky and the dragon looks shiny. Um, so yeah, probably 400 bucks. Yeah, that's, that's significant money. Significant. Well, I'll, I'll have to look around and think about it. Again, like shipping it is just a pain in the butt. But all right, guys. Yeah, he is looking really pretty. I like this color um, pattern. So thanks for suggesting it. Thanks for voting it in, guys. So we will continue with our shiny dragon of shininess uh, when next we come around to this uh, particular thing. Uh, tomorrow is Kitty, I think. Or yeah. Yep, it's our kitty, our spooky kitty diorama, where we are doing um, flagstones and stuff to get it all ready for painting. So spooky kitty, the necromancer, with his undead friend. And yeah, we'll do this. So I'll see you guys tomorrow, and I hope you have a lovely rest of your day, okay? Have a great one. Bye-bye.